Uh, this is just a disclaimer to let you know that uh, this video is not intended to be imitated, uh, no parts of it. Uh, it should not be copied or done by you or anybody. It's just for educational and maybe entertainment purposes to watch. That's it. I don't condone anyone repeating anything in the video. This is John Black, Super Chemist. Here to make some uh, one four dioxane. Now before I get into how to make that, I want to go over how to make diethyl ether. Okay. Um, this is the mechanism for it. You got alcohol, your ethanol, right? And you have your acid, sulfuric acid. I just put a proton there. Um, you protonate the alcohol, the alcohol so that you have a water group, right? That makes this oxygen monoxonium ion, which means it's positive. And oxygen is electronegative. So it likes to be negative. So it's going to grab some negativity off of this puny carbon here, making it positive. So another water molecule, see down here, or uh, alcohol molecule, can come up with its lone pair electrons and tag them onto that positive, uh, partial positive carbon there. And that can kick off the water group, right? Then you come over here and you got your water and you got this. Now you have another oxonium ion. So the electrons go to the oxygen and you get a proton, right? You started with a proton, you ended up with a proton. So you got, you know, this hydrogen sulfate you pulled off. That's the end one. So that's why we call that the catalyst, because it doesn't do anything. I mean, it does something, but it comes back. It doesn't get used up like, you know, theoretically. <laughs> so here's your product, diethyl ether. Now, I want to show you the mechanism to make 1,4-dioxane. Watch what I'm going to do to this. I'm going to change it so that it becomes how to make 1,4-dioxane. Okay, do you see what changed? I changed the ethanol into 1,2-ethane diol, which is, uh, most people call it uh, ethylene glycol. Most people call it ethylene glycol. That's the stuff you put in your antifreeze for your car. All I did was add that extra hydroxyl on, so that's the only difference between antifreeze and uh, vodka, right? You have an extra hydroxyl on the other carbon. It's doing the same exact thing. I didn't change anything. All I did was put an LH on all these. That's it. So how do you make 1,4-dioxane? Everything I just told you, replace ethanol with uh, ethylene glycol, right? Now when you get your diethyl ether, you go down here. This is what diethyl ether, see how it says? This is diethyl ether true. The same thing, right? What happens if the proton comes in? And look at that. These are the same. This is the same as that, this is the same as that, this is the same as that. A proton comes, protonates the OH, just like up there. It's not another ethanol, it's the same ethanol, ethyl group. I mean, it's the same molecule, but it's a different ethyl group. See how it's the same thing? It's an intermolecular uh, reaction, right? Same thing, the electrons come up to get the positive carbon, and it's positive because the oxygen was positive. And it, it's electronegative, so he, he took some of the negativity, unless carbon positive. The water kicks off, just like up here. And you have an oxonium ion with a proton, so that's easy. The proton goes away, and you're left with what you got, which is 1,4-dioxane. And your proton, or your uh, acid, is replenished. All right, this bottom flask here. I got it in an ice bath, and I have some uh, antifreeze in there, some ethylene glycol. Up here, I have about 20 milliliters of uh, concentrated sulfuric acid, and I'm going to drip it in at a very slow rate. Everything was chilled down in the, uh, well, actually, just the chemicals. Or chilled down in the uh, freezer 
Let me tell you, that ethylene glycol, it's like syrup when it gets that cold. I got a stir of water. I'm going to set that up. Make sure it stays cold. You notice every time I put sulfuric acid into an alcohol, I always do this setup. Whether I'm making an alkyl, alkyl uh, halide or uh, ether, I'm just going to drip that in when it's all dripped in and warmed up to warm temperature. We'll distill that out. Oh, there it is. I got it already set up and going. Just a simple distillation. You can see. Starting to bubble. Well, it's been bubbling actually. It's already up to here. I'll let it drip around that rate or slower until it's, you know, everything's over there, it foams up or, you know, starts getting disgusting. See, it's definitely black in there, the pot. I'm trying to do it as long as I can. The pot's dark as heck. I'm almost done with this distilling. See how much is in there. How much is in there. Let's see how much is in there. There's actually more to distill. If you look in there, you can see it's still liquidy. I don't know if you can see it on camera. There's a lot of solid in there. I'm just like tired of distilling. I just want to quit. Plus the drip rate slowed down. Oh, it's pretty much stopped now. Jacked up the heat. There it goes. All right, I want to do this maybe a couple more minutes and I'm going to call it a day. Well, there's my stuff. Uh, most people that distill it know when you get that foam, they keep distilling and distilling until it actually almost jumps over to the, you know, through the condenser. I, I mean, as soon as I see it inching up, that's it, I'm done. So I probably could have got more. This is crystal clear, but I don't know if you can see it on film. It's, it's got a yellow tint to it. That's why I put the white background. But anyways, this next thing, uh... Basically, I got to give it to Nerd Rage because I never would have figured this one out uh, is to put some sulfuric acid in there. So I'm going to pour 10 milliliters of sulfuric acid in there just a little at a time. Pat it in the refrigerator so it's, it's cold down. In fact, it's still cold. Well, that's it. I'm just going to set up the distillation. I'm going to make sure that this has warmed up because it's actually still cold. And uh, that's it. The sulfuric acid does, I guess, it acidifies and hydrolyzes some of the impurities and, you know, I mean, gets them out of there. Uh, some of the side products. Well, it's only been like two minutes or something, maybe three minutes. You see that spot in the middle there? That's not the. That's some kind of maybe it's polymerizing it or something. I, I don't know, but it's getting rid of some of the impurities, I guess. Maybe I should have shook it around. Anyways, I just wanted to show you that it's, it is getting rid of something.
Here we go. I'm set up for uh, put a bigger X column on there. Got a nice bath over here. Water cool condenser. I'm gonna get all the low boiling point stuff out of there. And then uh, the AC show boils at like 87.6 Celsius uh, or somewhere around there. Um, maybe four or five degrees before that, and four or five degrees after that, I uh, will collect for my stuff. Uh, this low boiling point stuff is just crap. As you can see, it's already coming out of the steel heads, only at 30 degrees. that was in the bottom there when I, after I put the hydrochloric acid in mixed with it and now it's even more yellow you can really tell it's yellow anyway that is the azeotrope we're getting out of there alright I'm halfway through the distillation you can see it it's yellow coming out, I don't know if you can tell. But it's definitely not white, I mean clear. I mean it's clear, but it's got a yellow tint. Like I said, I've got about half there. Probably half there. Got a pretty good shot of that front. Oh, got a little blast there. You can see how it's just barely going over. All right, here's the deal. This is the pot. This is what I got. This was the low boiling point stuff. I have to get that out of the bar and see how there's a very little. You should never smell chemicals. Yeah, it smells like uh, see aldehyde. 